Welcome back. In this video, let's take a look at typing event props. There are a lot of events that you can work with, but for this video, we're going to focus on the two most frequently used events as props. The click event on a button and the change event on an input element. Let's first take a look at the click event. For this example, I have a new file called button.tsx which contains a very simple button component. What we want here is for the button component to accept a click event as a prop and pass it on to the HTML button element. So we begin by adding the type at the top. Type button props and then the property we can call it handle click. Now half of the time a click handler does not need any parameter and doesn't return anything. For example, it can make an API call in the function body but doesn't have to accept a parameter or return a value. For such cases, you can type the event as empty parentheses, arrow function and does not return anything. So void. We can now add props colon button props and on the button on click is equal to props dot handle click. In app component we can now import the button component and invoke it. So button handle click is equal to a function and within the function body we simply log button clicked. No value is returned. And you can see that we also have no TypeScript errors. Another variant of this click handler is when you need the event passed in to your click handler. But what exactly is the type of this click event? Well for that we once again rely on a React type. The type of this event is react dot mouse event. We can also be more specific by saying this is a button click by adding angle brackets HTML button element. We don't have to import HTML button element as it is readily available in our TypeScript environment. In app.tsx we can now use the event parameter in the function body. So event parameter console log button clicked and we can specify event. Now this event type seems difficult to memorize at first but trust me this is something you'll probably memorize without even realizing. In fact you don't even have to memorize it. Just know where to find it and copy paste it for subsequent times. Lastly, with a button click, you might also want to have an ID parameter. And that is very simple. After event, comma, ID of type number. And on click, event, which is going to return props.handleClick we pass in event comma one where one is an id in app.tsx after event we can specify id as a parameter and log it to the console so this is pretty much about typing a click event as a component prop let's now move on to our second example i have a file called input.tsx which is a very simple input component. Typically with input elements, the component would need two props, the input value and the onChange handler. The process of typing is very similar to the click event type, so let's dive into the code straight away. Type input props, it has two props, value of type string and then handle change, which is going to be a function which returns nothing. 
However, it does have event as a parameter. And this event type is react.changeEvent. And we can narrow this down to HTML input element. Next, on the input component within parentheses, props of type input props. And on the HTML input element, value is equal to props.value. And on change is equal to props.handle change. In app.tsx, we can now import and invoke the component. So input value is equal to empty string. Handle change is equal to a function which receives the change event as an argument. We simply log to the console the same event. Now we are not going to worry about the value in this video. So I've set it to an empty string. But this is pretty much how you type the onChange event on an input element. Now what we have seen here is the handle change event being passed in as a prop. But this same typing also holds good if you're defining the handler within the component as well. So const handle input change is going to be equal to a function and here the same event type can be mentioned and on change can be set to handle input change. So it doesn't matter if you pass the event as a prop or define it within the component. Typing event arguments remain the same. As I've already mentioned, on click and on change are probably the most used events when creating React components, which is why I've covered only these two events. But I hope this video gives you sufficient knowledge to work with other kinds of events as well when you come across them. Alright then, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.